I've been working on a 6502 single board computer for quite some time now. This image here is my latest creation. It's a 650CO2 processor with SD card storage, banked ROM, banked RAM, and the Pico 9918 BDP display. It also has a small sound generator on it, and you can see that speaker sticking up in the front. The main interface to it is through a serial interface and it has a kind of operating system on it that feels like CPM but the underlying file system is really nothing like CPM. So let's show you how that looks. So this is what I'm calling the 6502 Retro Operating System for want of a better name. It, um, looks and feels a little bit like CPM. It has drives. You can there's eight drives supported. You can list files in those drives and you can type out their contents using I guess standard commands that you might be used to from CPM. Uh, underneath it uses similar concepts like FCBs and directory entries etc. Um, here I'm showing some basic files and the Mandelbrot basic set. And so we can run basic. That's using enhanced basic. That's just running as a regular application on the operating system. Here I'm going to load the Mandelbrot application and run it. It's The computer runs at 4 megahertz, so I'll speed up some of this. I get bored at some point and cancel it. But at 4 megahertz, it takes, I don't know, minutes and a half or so to print out the whole Mandelbrot set, which isn't fast, not by today's microprocessor speeds, but yeah, it's good enough for, for me anyway. Uh, the rest of the operating system, I guess, is much like you'd expect. Uh, you can copy files and uh, rename files. Uh, I'm just showing more stuff that's on here. So yeah, the stat tool is useful for looking at the size of files. Oh, it's got a monitor application, just the WASMON standard thing that you get when you work with 6502 to inspect memory. You can dump the contents of binary files. Uh, and what else can it do? I can't remember what I recorded here. I guess I'm going to copy a file and show how that works. So different CPM you copy from the source to the destination. Uh, you do have to provide the drive references for the files though. So because the copy application is a transient application, it's not built into the operating system at all. And then finally, just implemented today, actually renaming files from source to destination. That only works in the same directory. You, you can't rename across directories because, in effect, that would be a move. So to do that on here, you would do a copy and, and then a move. So finally, I'm going to just show, this was a sort of small C application that I wrote uh, just to, I guess, show that I can do things in C as well. We'll go look at the repo in, in GitHub. And this is the GitHub repository where you can find all the source code for the operating system. Uh, if you look inside this repo, you'll find a few interesting folders. There's a docs folder which contains user guides, integration guides, and a useful memory map reference card. So you can know where various system memory areas are and I.O. blocks, etc. Uh, there's a PDF of the schematic and, as I say, a user guide and a programmer's guide. There are, in the apps folder, are all the applications that I've been writing for the operating system. And I have a port of MS Basic and a port of EH Basic. Uh, Conway's Game of Life to work with the Pico 9918 BDP display driver, various C applications and just general utility applications. 
then there's the BIOS folder. So this contains the drivers for the SD card, the serial interface, the sound chip, and um, also uh, BSS initialization, that kind of thing that you need. Uh, then the PLD for the uh, programmable logic. So I'm currently running the, the more RAM version of it. This breaks the memory address down into you know these ranges and sets the signals on the PCB according to you know which address is being requested. This is how we route signals to our uh, devices on, on the board. N not at least the I/O access and the RAM access and the ROM access is kind of arbitrated by this chip, uh, as well as combining all of the interrupts that can come from the serial interface, the via, and the graphics VDP display driver. Then the operating system itself is called Simple File System Operating System, SFOS. This is the meat and potatoes of the operating system, and it's, you know, 1,073 lines long. All the functions which the applications call and which the command processor calls are contained in this file. The command processor is what you see when you use the operating system. It has the intrinsic functions and it has the function that lets you load and run an application off disk. For me, for your 6502 to be useful, it really does need some form of operating system that's beyond simply uh, pasting applications into BASIC or pasting binary content into WASMON, for example. Being able to load and save data from disk really, I think, uh, opens the use of the system up so much more. Uh, you can see why people who work with Z80s really strive to run Z, you know, CPM on on their Z80 computers. There just isn't anything like that for the 6502. Although David Given did port 65 uh, CPM over to the BBC Micro uh, and I think the Commodore 64, and I did consider porting to my board, but I, I wanted to make my own file system anyway, so. I wanted to go through this journey and, and, and learn something in the process, and I think I have. So, yeah, look, thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this video.